Good day folks, welcome back. Today I've got something very spectacular in my armory. I've probably got the most beautiful, awesome, unbelievable springer in my hands. This is the Air Arms TX200 Sporter model with the adjustable chickpeas, the adjustable back plate, adjustable trigger. The only thing I can't adjust is the nut behind the gun, but my wife does that for me. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to check for accuracy first and foremost. Now I know this gun is accurate, but what I want to do is I want to find the palette that suits this gun the best. So I've got a variety of palettes. I'll introduce them as I go along from different makes, models, brands, weights, the whole scenario. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to look for the optimal palette for this TX200. Now, a couple of disclaimers. Um, the spring hasn't settled yet. Um, the gun has got about 300 shots through it, so I still need to do about 1,700 before the spring will actually settle. But I want to see initially what pellet suits at the current speed out of the current barrel, because that's what I'm going to use for my competitions in the interim. I'm not going to shoot 2,000 shots with it and then only going to shoot a competition. I'm going to go and brag with this baby because it's what a beautiful, beautiful gun. Such nice checkering, nice work on the stock, everything. It's actually a pity to take it out of the cupboard, but I didn't buy it to leave it in the cupboard. So, for today, let's do the initial testing. I'm going to shoot at my private range, and this is a 30 meter range. And I'm going to do three five-shot groups per pellet. Now, for you guys, I will edit, make it as fast as possible, because what you don't see in the background is me every time cocking the lever, putting it back on the gun rest, re-zeroing the whole thing, getting everything right before I can shoot, pull the trigger. So today's shooting alone is probably going to take me four to five hours and then the editing behind this is about another eight to ten hours worth of editing for you to see a 15 minute video. So please do appreciate the poor YouTubers that do put in the effort, the time and to bring you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So sit back and relax. Let's go into the shooting part of this. 30 meters. This is pallet testing 101. And yes, once I've got 2,000 shots through the barrel, I will redo the pellets that look the best out of this experiment of today. Let's go for it. Before I start shooting today, a very, very big thank you. First and foremost, to the current FT World Champion, um, Gerard Genade. Boyke, I hope you defend your title there in Phoenix in Arizona. This was the gun that Gerard got as first prize at Worlds. And he so kindly borrowed it with a lot of fine print in the background. I'm so glad that um, I got hold of this gun. What a unique gun. I heard rumors that um, Air Arms is going to stop production of these, specifically in this stock. It would be an absolute shame. Gerard, thank you very much. And then a big shout out to Deval, Deval Fisser. He is my gun mechanic here in the Cape. Deval was so kind to put some thread in the front for me to put a silencer on. Uh, also a uh, cocking lever as well all his design and he is busy building me an aluminium hamster for to take this baby to FT style I wish I had a Gen B stock or a um, Gary Kane stock for FT for this baby I think it will do immaculately shooting FT for you two gentlemen Gerard and Deval love you lots eh peace bros let's start with the old trusty JSBs these are the 8.44s and today I'm not worried about accuracy too much. I'm looking for grouping. I'm looking for consistency. And I'm looking for these pallets to one hole. <laughs> Me and a springer. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Let's go. Oh, very high. That wasn't the best start ever. Slightly better. Let me adjust the windage a little bit. And do the final five. That didn't go 100% according to plan. Um, these springers are so old sensitive. 
So that's part of the fun. That's why we do it. That's why we don't always shoot PCPs. We need a bit of a challenge. This is called the big boy gun in any case. Mm. Right, let's go over to the JSBs and this is the 10.34 grains. Right, let me just make a little bit adjustment, elevation adjustment. Next five. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is the knob here behind the gun. Hey, I'm battling to get the gun into the exact same position every single time. Having the same pressure holds everywhere. I'm letting the gun free right off the bench rest in the front. Trying to get my hands, my shoulder, everything with exactly the same pressure. Let's try again. Little bit better, not what I want. Next one, and this is a test, ba test batch of pellets that I've got. These are the air arms, also in 10 grains. 10.3 grain. Ah, that last one was me. Now this is proving to be a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> New respect to you Springer's shooters. Man, hold sensitivity. The moment I get the hold right, the grouping improves immediately. So uh, as I said, much more difficult than I thought. I thought this was going to be an easy exercise. Ah, just shoot a couple of group things. This pellet is the best. <laughs> hmm. Next one is going to be my H&N Field Target Trophies. And these are the 8.64 grain babies. And what would the day be without some technical issues? Right about here, my camera in the front decided to shut down. But I still need to talk you through one or two of these actions. So bear with me for a second. Interesting to note, when I load these pallets, they do go in a lot stiffer into the barrel than the air arms and the JSBs. Um, it almost feels like they are oversized, but they are not. But they do go in with a with a little bit of help. What the fluff is going on? I shot bench rest the other day with this gun at 29 meters. And I shot at 215, 220. Now, that's not a great score. But I'm not even getting close to shooting 50 with bench rest going on at the speed I'm shooting. Alright, there are some initial groupings there. But I think most of that errors might be me. I can't really blame it on the pellets or anything. Let me carry on regardless. Maybe stuff improve as I go along, as I get more used to the gun this morning. But something is off and I need to get my finger on it. Hmm. Right, so I've, I'm having a bit of a frustrating day. If it's not the camera, not wanting to work with me, it's the pellet. So I've made a few minor adjustments to my setup. Let's see if I can get better results with this. First up will be my QYS domed pellets in 8.48 grain. Now that's a lot better. Fine adjustments are working. Ah, now we're getting to the true colors. Now that's a lot better. Finally got the setup right. I'll probably have to reshoot those initial pallets, but that's fine. That's how we learn together. Blimey me. All right, next one up, QYS, but these are the streamlines, same weight. 
<laughs> center of center. <laughs> that was an X. Ah. Now that's weird. Three, almost same hole in the bottom. Two, same hole but in the bull. I think it's safe to say that the TX loves these QIA streamlines. It's quite interesting because with the PCP, the domes were a lot more accurate, but it was at a slightly higher speed as well. The TX is running these uh, pallets at around about 720 feet per second, which is way too slow. But that is just the spin not, not settling down yet. And this is where camera number one packed up, the Canon R6. I thought to myself, oh my greatness, can it get any worse? Huh, <laughs> surprise, it can. And then about here, camera number two packed up. So I don't have footage of the rest of this card, but at least I can talk you through what the results were. The JTS has performed well. Um, the second and the third grouping, and even the first grouping was not too shabby. Um, yes, there's room for improvement, but that can be me as well. Again, these pallets weren't even going into the barrel. Some of them were definitely a different size. I don't know if it's just a skirt and that the head size is correct, but they de definitely did not go in smoothly. When I got to the Barracuda FTs in 9.57 grain, this whole scenario was just extrapolated. Oh, that's a big word for me. It just got worse. The pallets really battled to go into the barrel itself, and the results showed that as well. Something there is off. But let's see if I can get this right on the third card, hopefully. Never say die is not in my vocabulary. Yes, my one camera gave issues again, but at least the target camera was working 100%. So these are the JTS domes in 10.43 grain. And yes, I was having loading issues again. The skirts, they flare a little bit, and I just battled to get them into the breech itself. But the grouping, wow, not too shabby, Nige. Next up is the Hunter, uh, the h and N Barracuda matches in 10.65. These were the heaviest of the pallets that I shot. And the same with the JTS, I had a huge battle getting them into the barrel. The groupings wasn't something to write home about. So let's move on to the next one. Now I'm going to reshoot the Air Arms 10.3 and the JSBs in 8.44. The first thing I noted about the Air Arms is how smoothly they loaded into the barrel. The first shot was high, so I just readjusted the scope and then I was back to action with some excellent groupings to follow. Uh, I should have gone with the wife this morning. She offered breakfast, but now nah, Gert wants to make a video. Again, camera issues this morning. All right, so what I did is in those five shots is I shot the uh, JSBs 8.44s and I had an immaculate grouping. Oh, that was me. <clears throat> Told you it was me. Pulled it, yo. While in this trend of camera failure, let's add another one. Oh my greatness. Yep, that's not bad groupings. And I am now gut full, sorry for Afrikaans, of camera failures. I'm just tired. <laughs> let's call a spade a spade. I'm tired. My eyes are tired. My arms are tired. I are tired. All right. Interesting, 
let's do a conclusion on that and then we can do a conclusion on the gun quickly all right conclusion time first and foremost thanks wifey she brought me a cup of coffee Ooh. All right the tx 200 um i think this is an absolute stunning stunning gun if i look at the results today yes there were certain pallets that it absolutely adored and there's certain pallets that didn't like the speed as i said right in the beginning the spring hasn't settled yet i still need to shoot about a thousand six hundred and fifty odd shots with it for the spring to fully settle and to get it up to speed if it's then not up to speed i'll have to do some internal work to get it up to speed ideally i want this gun to shoot about 785 feet per second for competition purposes so let's do a quick summary of the different pallets if i look at that first card that i shot um I'm just going to put the card one side and say, duh, your technique wasn't correct. So let's go on to the second card. On the second card, the QYS domes, excellent, excellent groupings. But I think the grouping of the day, and this is a combination between pallets, gun, and uh, idiot behind the gun, is the streamlines, which surprised me quite significantly. I think that was some great groupings, especially there on that second grouping. The JTSs also, the 8.7 grainers, awesome, awesome groupings there. The fitting was every bit so... Oh, foot's up, motor feet. The JTSs, um, a little bit inconsistency getting into the barrel. And I don't know if that's the reason I get groupings there and then all of a sudden I'm grouping a little lower. It did not particularly like the H&N Barracudas, the FTs. On the JTS domes, the 10.3, oh, 10.4 grain, apologies. I saw some decent groupings there, but again, a little bit inconsistency in getting into the barrel, as if the skirts are a little bit open up on all of them. Might be that the head size is perfect, but the skirts just flare a little bit. The H&M Barracudas, mixed results there, but extremely tight fit. I really had to force the pallet in there, and I think because of that, some inconsistency. Air arms and JSP 10.3 grain is always a winner through any barrel, and specifically through the TX200 as well. Try again. I think the surprise for me was the JSP 8.44s. Now, for my PCPs, I tend to move over to the heavies a little bit because I'm not the world's best wind reader. But yes, how can I argue against groupings so tight with that? Look at that first grouping. The second grouping, the top shot, that was absolutely idiot error. I didn't shoulder the gun properly, and that's the difference with that. Absolutely, absolutely immaculate shooting. So, conclusion regarding the gun. It doesn't seem to be that pellet fussy. I haven't even tried the differences between 451s, 452s and 453s. Um, I just tested the different brands, different uh, weights. And I'm extremely happy with the results. With a gun that's so brand spanking new, hasn't been shot in yet. Um, shooting off a bench, uh, learning to shoot off a bench by the way. And my gun is not properly set up for bench either. And that's where the shoulder issues come from. Couple of lessons learned. Luckily, I've got great coffee. <laughs> I had another camera failure. All right. What are my key takeouts of the TX200? First and foremost, world-class gun. Excellent, excellent gun. If you can't shoot this gun, it is you, not the gun. Even with a brand new spring that hasn't been shot properly uh, and that, I'm getting excellent groupings where my concentration and my technique is correct. A um, couple of things that I did learn, and you can take this, uh, and it will differ probably from shooter to shooter. But first and foremost, the TX doesn't like a strong grip in the front. And I think the main reason for that is the, the sensitivity of the spring. So if you get into a competition where you shoot, you change your grip or the grip pressure every time. And that has influence on accuracy. So try to let the front end of the rifle free floating at all times. Put it flat in your hand instead of gripping it. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two, exactly the same with your trigger finger. Your trigger finger, please, please don't grip that on the back. I know it's got a lovely grip and you want to hold this gun, but grip it lightly and make sure that your finger is in exactly the same spot on the trigger every single time. And then don't pull a trigger, squeeze a trigger. This is like a girlfriend. You don't pull a girlfriend, you squeeze a girlfriend. All right. Third thing that I've learned today is that... Um, the amount of shoulder pressure needs to be consistent. So that is something I need to really, really focus on when I take start shooting FT with this gun, is in my sitting position to make sure that I shoulder it exactly the same time every single time. The same amount of pressure on the shoulder, as well as exactly the same position 
on the cheek piece as well. If I don't do that, I will never ever shoot consistent. So from uh, my point of view, I think this is one of the most beautiful, beautiful air guns out there from a springer perspective. I rate it 10 out of 10. I can't fault this gun. I can only fault the nut behind the gun. So that's me. From my side, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and liking. See you in the next one. That's all, folks.